In this problem, we have a positively charged sphere that is hanging from the ceiling by a rope. As given in the problem, this sphere has both mass and an electric charge. As we can see from the figure, a second charged particle, this one a negative charge, is held near the positively charged sphere at a distance of d away from the positive one. Part A of the problem is asking us to find the tension in the string. So because there are a few different forces acting on the sphere, let's draw a free body diagram and work out the different forces on the sphere. So this will be our free body diagram for sphere 1. Now first off, there's going to be the force due to tension from the string, which is directed upwards. This is going to be T. And there are two different forces pulling on the, the sphere downwards. First, there is the force due to the sphere's weight, which has a magnitude of mg, that's the mass of the sphere, multiplied by the gravitational acceleration. And there's also going to be the attractive electrostatic force pulling down on the sphere due to the presence of the negatively charged sphere, sphere 2. So we'll call this F sub E, as it is the electrostatic force. Now, if we assume that the string is taut, then that means that sphere 1, the positively charged sphere, is not moving at all. And if it's not moving at all, then this means that the net force on that sphere is equal to 0. And as we can see from our free body diagram, this net force of 0 must be a net effect of the different forces acting on the sphere in the vertical direction. So our net force must be equal to the sum of these forces. So let's sum together these forces as vectors. Let's assume we have a typical coordinate system where the up direction is positive. This means that the tension force is positive, and adding on to this we're going to subtract the force from the weight and the electrostatic force from particle 2. So this means that 0 is equal to T, the tension force, minus mg minus F sub e. Now the problem is asking us to find the tension in the string, so this T variable is what we're looking to solve for. Fortunately for us, this is a fairly simple algebraic expression. To solve for T, we just add 2, 0, mg, and F sub e to get T on its own. So we find that the tension force is equal to mg plus the electrostatic force. Expanding this out a bit further, recall that the electrostatic force between two charged particles is going to be equal to Coulomb's law. And recall that Coulomb's law tells us that this electrostatic force is equal to the Coulomb constant K multiplied by the product of the magnitude of the charges divided by the square of the distance between them, which in this case is represented by the variable d. So if we're going to solve for the tension in the string t, we just need to substitute into this equation the variables we've been given. We've been told that the mass of the charged particle is equal to 7.5 grams. So converting this into SI units of kilograms, this becomes 7.5 times 10 to the power of negative 3 kilograms, multiplied by the gravitational acceleration of 9.8 meters per second squared. Then we add the electrostatic force term from Coulomb's law. So the Coulomb constant has a value of 8.99 times 10 to the power of 9 with units of newton meter squared per coulomb squared. And we multiply this by the product of the magnitudes of the charges. So charge 1 has a charge magnitude of 32 nanocoulombs. So that's 32 times 10 to the power of negative 9 coulombs multiplied by the magnitude of charge 2, which is given as 58 nanocoulombs, or 58 times 10 to the power of negative 9 coulombs. And we divide this term by the square of the distance between the two charged particles, which is given in the problem as 2 centimeters.
or rather 2 times 10 to the power of negative 2 meters. And don't forget to square it. If we put all of this into a calculator, then we find the tension to be 0 0.115 newtons. And that is the tension of the string. Part B of the problem changes the situation a little bit. Now we're assuming that the string can only withstand a maximum tension up to a magnitude of 0 0.18 newtons. We're asked to find what the smallest value of d can be before the string will break. Now this problem is based on the fact of Coulomb's law that the closer two charged particles are together, the stronger that electrostatic force is. So if we were to change the situation by taking Q sub 2 and moving it further and further upwards, closer to Q sub 1, then the force between the two particles would become stronger and stronger because that distance is closing. Let's take the same formula we used that we found from Newton's second law for the sum of all the different forces acting on particle 1, and instead we're going to treat the d as unknown, and we're going to treat the t as known. We're going to try and find what the distance has to be in the case where the tension value is at 0 0.18 newtons. So we're going to start from the same Newton's second law formula that we started with at the beginning of part A, only now it's going to be F sub E that we're isolating on its own because the Coulomb term is the term that involves d. So adding both sides of this equation to a positive f sub e, we get f sub e on its own, where f sub e is equal to the tension force minus mg for the weight. And again, we can expand out the electrostatic force using Coulomb's law. So t minus mg is equal to k, multiplied by the product of the magnitudes of the charges, putting these in absolute value lines, divided by the square of the distance between them. This time it's d we're trying to isolate, so we're going to use some algebra here to solve for d. To do this, we're going to multiply both sides of the equation by d squared, and then we're going to divide both sides of the equation by t minus mg to isolate the d squared. So we find d squared to be equal to k multiplied by the magnitudes of the charges divided by t minus mg. Then we're just going to take the square root of both sides of the equation to get d fully on its own, all by itself. So we find that d is equal to the square root of k times q sub 1 times q sub 2 divided by t minus mg. All that's left for us to do now is plug our values into the calculator, into this equation. It's the square root of k, the Coulomb constant, which again has a value of 8.99 times 10 to the power of 9 newton meter squared per coulomb squared, multiplied by the magnitudes of the charges, so that's 32 nanocoulombs for q1, and 58 nanocoulombs for q2. Remember to multiply by 10 to the power of negative 9 to convert from nanocoulombs into coulombs. And this is being divided by the tension force. And rec recall, we're looking at 0 0.18 newtons in this case, because that is the case of where the rope will break, minus the mass, which is 7.5 grams, or 7.5 times 10 to the power of negative 3 kilograms, multiplied by 9.8 meters per second squared, the gravitational acceleration. And if we put this into a calculator, then we find a distance of 
times 10 to the power of negative 2 meters, which can be more simply written as 1.25 centimeters. And that is the answer to part B of the problem. And that is it for the entire problem. I hope this video helped you out. If it did, please consider subscribing, as that'll help me out in making more videos just like this. And if you have a request or a question, leave a comment down below, and I'll do my best to help you out as best I can. That's all for now, and I hope you all have a lovely day. Bye-bye.